All right. Am I supposed to do the intro now? Yeah, I don't say that though. <laughs> Welcome to Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Well, clearly we have a brand new, exciting, never been done before episode here for you today on Fuzzy Butts and Friends because it's a little bit wild. We've got two cameras. Uh, here we are in uh, the Morgan Mansion kitchen. Uh, we've got uh, Chef Big Dog. Today I'm not your big dog, I'm Chef Big Dog. We've got sous chef Ginger Morgan here. Chef Little Dog. Chef Little Dog. And we have the chef of the day, the marquee chef, the person here to show us how to make an awesome recipe for pets and people is Rana with uh, Neo Claws. Rana, how are you? Hello, Luke. Happy to be here. I know uh, we're getting the yeah, Zoom happy thing going. We finally right? got this thing figured out. It's weird. We don't really have the kitchen here at the Morgan man uh, Mansion for... Uh, uh, for uh, filming a good kitchen shot. So we've got two cameras. So it's going to kind of confuse the audience. I got to look in here. My laptop's down here. So it's going to be looking like I'm not looking at the camera. So occasionally I'll, I'll go here, go there, go down here to Ginger. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. We've never done this before, but I'm excited. It'll be a cool show. All right, Ro, what I'm going to do, let me just make sure. Oh, our sushi, uh, our taste testers. We got our two fuzzy butt taste testers here at uh, the Morgan Manor. We got Miss Lily. Can you bring her over here? Lily, come here. Say hi. Okay. Greg, Greg, come on. Get up. Greg, Greg. There's Greg, Greg Grayson right here. My kid, my three legged Pyrenees. Come over here. Yeah. Anyway, we're... we've got two yeah. taste testers. So we've got a great, Ro has got a wonderful recipe for us today. And on that note, Ro, you are busy at work. You have me get my stuff ready on my end. So I'm going to let you take over the show. All right. This is great, Luke. I'm so thrilled to be here. This is awesome. So normally there's a camera just on me and what I'm cooking. So this is completely new, as Luke said. So I'm super stoked just to have this new adventure presented to both of us, my friend. I've got my taste tester here, lovely Mimi. Let's see if you can see her. Hi, Mimi. Hi, baby. She's a very gorgeous yeah. Mimi. <laughs> Now, let me take you through the what we're making today, Lou. Okay. It's beef. Okay. Now, people are probably wondering, how do you make beef bourguignon for you and your pet, right? Because the beef bourguignon has wine, it has onions and garlic and carrots and mushrooms, all kinds of spices. And we are going to take you through how easy it is to cook for yourself and your best friends. So this is the most important thing. And that, but that's so, the most important thing, uh, I think, from the show is that you want to take what, what I think is a very sophisticated, rich, traditional recipe. And, and the cool thing about what you're doing is saying, hey, you can make the same recipe for the most part with mostly the same ingredients and not have to change anything out. And you'll at the end of it all, we'll have a meal for you and your canine companion, or maybe a feline, I'm not sure if you want to feed this to your kitty cat, but at least your canine companion. So that's what's cool about this recipe, right? You can have that's a right. meal is, for everybody. This is exactly right. And this is what my show, Healthy Cooking with Ro, uh, for you and your recipes designed for you and your pet is all about. Because so often we're in the kitchen anyway cooking. Well, why don't we just make a little bit of extra just, you know, make it a little bit different. Uh, don't add the spices to it. And then serve your furry best friend at the same time. And then you can both have dinner together. And it's healthy. It's all about health, right? So you saw me putting the uh, the braised steak into the pan. Uh, I've used reverse osmosis water. So you can use your filtered water, whichever you prefer. I stay away from tap water. I never give tap water uh, to my animals. I always stick to reverse osmosis. And even when I'm cooking for myself or for them, uh, it is also with the best water possible. Because why? Because our bodies are made up of 75% water. So you wanna make sure that what's flowing through your veins and your piping is not rusting you on the inside, right? So very important. In fact, Luke, I know in our last interview together, we talked about that, cancer and water. So we have to remember too, that water is the source and it has to be clean. Otherwise, uh, your body is not working at optimal, you know, uh, health here. So that's very important. That's number one. So what I did with the steak was very easy. I just put salt 
and pepper in right now with the oregano. And now it's steaming in the water. That's all I've done. And in another pot, uh, hopefully you've seen that uh, in, the, in the beginning, I, I boiled these baby potatoes. And I'd also like to make mention to everyone that my preference and choice is always to use organic. Okay, certified organic. And again, what you put in your body is what you energy that you put out. So let's remember that no chemicals, no preservatives. I try to stay away from processed foods as much as possible. And uh, yeah, let's get cooking. I mean, this is great. I'm just checking mine. You had me put to you. You had me. We're, we're, so for the audience out there, this is one of the episodes you're just going to have to watch on our YouTube channel. I don't think it's going to cut it listening to us on Spotify because it's going to be crazy. You need the visuals here. So before the show, Ro uh, was so kind that to ask me to go ahead and dump the, the potatoes and the stew meat, uh, the chuck roast on uh, into a boiling pot. So I'm about... 50 minutes into it's not boiling. I have it down on low. So I just wanted to check it and make it sure it's still okay on my end. Yes. Where you're How's at? it looking, Luke? How's it looking? Mine's looking good now, my friend. Okay. All right. I'm, so I'm going to go ahead. Do you want me to go ahead and, and, and boil it again or turn the, what do you want me to do? No, do you think that you're, you're, you're 40 minutes in. That's typically how long it would take to. So the turn beef. the heat. So turn, right. So turn the yeah, heat. Yeah. Go down to a simmer. Correct. Okay. So what we're going to do is. Um, once this is pretty much cooked and the potatoes, my potatoes, I've turned off. Can you see my potatoes? I can see her. I have to look very close to my laptop to see the potatoes. <laughs> they're I mean, potatoes. like a big yeah. screen here. This is yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Cameras. So, okay, so my <laughs> potatoes are cooked. So I'm just letting them sit in the, you know, hot water, but this, the stove's off. Okay. My uh, beef is now cooking. I've already added salt to the potatoes, so that's good. So okay. what we're going to do now um is da, da, da. we're going to take after once this is ready we're going to take the beef and the potatoes and put them in actually no that's not true what we're going to do while this is finishing cooking is we're going to start on our gunion sauce and you're wondering what is a gunion sauce right which is the garlic and onion sauce okay so garlic right. and onions and then we're going to fry it up with the bacon. And I want to make another point of mention, which is very important to my healthy cooking style, is the least amount of fat. Now, I know some, you know, eating animal fat is good for the body because we do need it, um, but not exaggerated. So when I was cleaning and cutting the, the beef in little pieces, because my pup is very small as opposed to yours, um, I literally took the extra fat off of it. So I just cut it off and discarded it, okay? So this way we're down to clean, cleaner, lighter, right? Now with the bacon, we're gonna do the same thing as well. So I'll cut around a little bit off the bacon fat because if we're gonna add it to our garlic onion sauce, we can't drain it afterwards, right? Okay. So now let's let's show about the uh, that sauce now on the okay. side. I'm I'll gonna figure out how to do this without... Okay, I, I got. I went ahead and, and fried up some bacon on my end, so I've got the bacon ready here. Oh, good. Um, on my end, and I separated out the bacon, uh, the bacon grease for us to use later. So, good, good. Do you okay, want, do you good. want this Perfect. bacon chopped up? Should my sous chef Ginger be chopping up this bacon? Yes, I need a sous chef too. Can Ginger pop over through the phone and help me? Out? <laughs> okay, that would be really nice. <laughs> I keep asking Mimi to do it, but she's just not. I, I rent her out for twenty dollars an hour, good. of which I get eighteen. Oh my goodness gracious! Okay, this is <laughs> okay, good. So it's four. I need to chop up four pieces. Four slices of bacon. Yeah, that's what the recipe. Yeah, okay. just and, yeah, and guys, we'll so put the small, recipe on. What's that? Into yeah, no, no, go ahead. Into small pieces. Okay, All Ginger's right. cutting them up into small pieces. And uh, to the audience, we will put the actual recipe with the <laughs> proportions and the amounts and the process up in our show notes uh, when we air this podcast for sure, because I know we're kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, so you did about, I just want to clarify, <laughs> you did about two pounds of chuck roast uh, or stew meat and then about yes. three cups of sliced uh, uh, miniature potatoes. Is that right? Yeah, so I did basically, yeah, I did, uh, well, half a pack. So I would say probably four cups of potatoes. Everyone okay. likes potatoes because it's being served uh, without rice or anything. So this is your right. starch. Okay. And uh, the nice thing about the potatoes, it will soak up the flavors. Can you see this pot here, Luke? 
I can. Yes, ma yes, ma'am. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I, you know, as I mentioned, um, we cooked the potatoes in the water. So I'm going to take this water and now use it for the garlic and onion sauce. So, you know, you guys are probably thinking, what's, what's up with the water situation? Like, who cooks with water? Well, I do. And in fact, it's so delicious because it really... The flavors of the food really kind of stick to to itself and uh, it makes it a lot easier as well uh, on the body because once you start using the oils and everything you're going to be uh, again making the digestive process heavier so that's why you want to keep the fats to a minimum so let's get the garlic and the onions in here did you already fry up your garlics and onions i have yet? not i'm doing it right now do you want all two cups of the onions i think is what oh I'm yeah for. oh yeah just put it in there's all nothing right, this bourguignon right is full of flavor and delicious so and you want you good. want that sauteed in some baking grease and some butter correct no actually i've now used the jus from the potatoes right so you use the water from the potato first you get it all like, and then you could add the bacon into it, and that'll give it the the fat that you need. Do you know okay, what I so mean? no no grease. So you want me to use the water from the potatoes, yeah. yeah, and then put the the onions and the garlic in that. Correct. Correct. That's, okay, that's good. I'll do that right now. So let's do that. What temperature do you have the skillet on for the garlic Perfect. and the? Well, I'm actually going to put it on high to speed it up. Why not? Because, right. you know, you can't overcook the uh, garlic and onions pretty much. That's, that's really so I'm going to move it over to this side here. Perfect. Hold on. There you go. You really oh. think people are going to listen to this on your podcast? <laughs> I love it. Ah, cooking on podcast. That's beautiful. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we may, right. we may be creating a genre here. I don't know if it's going to be uh, the genre that will fail miserably, but it would be it's be interesting. And that's a you cool know what? Thing. It's all about fun, isn't it, Luke? We're well, that, fun, well, that's the most important thing is we're having fun with the pets and we're having fun together. Yeah. I mean, you know, look at Mimi. She's having the ball of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you should you know. get some of the Pinot Noir. <laughs> Oh, that's a good. Are you having some? <laughs> no, I'm iced tea. Oh, good for you. Me too. I'm having iced coffee. Yeah, yes, no, yes, it's, yes, it's, yes, middle, yes. it's middle of the day. It's been a long day. And so I need something to stimulate a little caffeine. So I've got, oh, yeah. I've got mine. Uh, so I go ahead and drop the, the onions and the uh, garlic, correct? Correct. So you see now mine's like, you know, you got to love these gas stoves. They just cook so quickly, don't they? So in the meantime, love, this is cooking nicely at the back. That. Yeah, the best, right? Honestly, just speedy Gonzalez stuff here. Yeah, we had a, a good thing. We have a, 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 a friend in the uh, that has a really nice uh, kitchen, but has the island. Everything is open, and it and you can film a lot easier. You don't have these weird angles. You can see everything, and it's nicely lit. The problem That's is, nice. it's electric, not gas. Oh, I can't stand. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You did you want to add a bit thing. more, Luke? Did you add a bit of salt to your uh, to your garlic and onion mix? Just a I'm little bit. I'm doing that right now. I'm I'm a little okay. behind you, but then again, you're the most important thing, not me. I'm I'm going slow. Over here. Well, Luke, let's talk about that. I mean, typically you yourself and also your you know your followers and friends, dog friends. Um, what do they usually feed their animals? Well, a wide range. You have some that have had successes with the strictly a kibble diet. We have uh, mm -hmm. a lot of our supporters that actually truly make and prepare everything for their kids, whether it's mm -hmm. cooked or raw. Uh, yeah. a tremendous variety of, amongst those supporters of Puppy Up and the families I've met and cooked with uh, on my travels. Lovely, lovely. That's nice. Yes, my 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 clients too, and my friends. Uh, I. Uh, most of my girlfriends, when they got dogs, all they actually uh, all took after me and cooked for their dogs, which is very nice. Um, you know, again, it's just, you know, what I love most about all of this is that when you cook, it's about love, right? You're you're cooking with love. You're feeding because you love your family. You love your body. You love yourself. You know, that's how it, it's all about that. And that's the most important thing. So I think uh, for that reason, that's why I choose to uh, cook for the animals as well. Now, you know, people always ask me, do you think that dogs or cats or 
any animal live longer when you feed them home cooked meals, right? So it's becoming quite the trend now to do this, correct? Uh, everyone's kind of on the bandwagon. Oh, and a lot of companies are selling home cooked meals uh, for your pets, which is wonderful. And why not? I mean, we eat it, let them eat it. But what my point too is that is that what you're buying from the stores is actually what you're making for yourself. Right. So it's a lot cheaper, okay, if if you cook it yourself. But of course, we also have to remember not everybody's a chef. And I get that. And you know what? I wouldn't call myself a chef, although I do cook every day and I love cooking. And I studied that in school. But you don't have to be a chef to cook for yourself or for your dogs or your animals, right? So let's keep that in mind. So mm -hmm. don't be don't be uh, shy about it or or insecure about it okay not at all but I, what i love about this is that is that you're taking kind of a complex complicated recipe that most people would would uh love to have for dinner in fact when i picked up the bottle of pinot noir at the at the uh wine <laughs> store uh, i i told them what it was going to be used for and the guy's like oh i i there's a restaurant here that makes the most beautiful um mm -hmm. uh bourguignon and uh before you know oh really uh, Exactly. And so you can make it something as fancy for yourself that other people like, but you can also have your yeah. pets the same thing. And it's good. Yeah, so um, what do we do now? How long? What's the next step? I got to make sure I'm at okay. where you're at. So I'm going to add the bacon to this in a couple of minutes. My, my beef, I'm going to soon turn it off. And then what we're going to do is transpose all of the ingredients uh, once we separate the beef for the dog and for our recipe. Okay, so there's two ver there are two steps to our recipes. One is for us. Well, first the dog, and then right. for us. Yeah. So do we need another skillet? Yeah. You know. Well, I'm using the one that I boiled my potatoes in to throw everything in there with All the right. water that's still there because you want that. Now, when you're making the beef bourguignon uh, sauce, uh, you can add a teaspoon of flour in it so that it thickens the sauce. Right. So it's what they call a roux, which is R O U. Uh, that that's always what would thicken any sauce that you need to be thickened. Yeah, part of my family comes from Louisiana. I got some Cajun and uh, the Cadian, and that's and, and they you learn how to make a roux uh, when you're real young over there. And if you screw it up, and uh, and as you know, not stir it or or cook it too hot, you can you can screw up a roux pretty good. So are you, um, let me ask you a question, Ro, is, are the, are the onions going yeah. in the, the pet portion, the, the one for our kids, the onions? I'm going to now throw this into, by the way, the potatoes, the carrots are going to go in with the potatoes right now to sit okay. in the hot water. Okay. okay. So let's, let's do that. Got it. I'm sorry, Luke, I didn't mean to ignore you. The mushrooms go last, so not yet. What did you ask about the onions? Are, are the onions going in for the, for the, for the dog portion? For, for our no, kids. That's what, that's, what I, that's what I thought. No, absolutely okay. not. I just wanted to clarify that because onions along with avocados and chocolate is kind of one of the no-nos for, for fuzzy bugs. That's can't, right. Can't that's that. right. So we've got the, uh, the onions, garlic. Now, there's a bit of controversy with my life too and garlic. I, when I was making the raw food for the dogs, uh -huh. um, I, we always put a clove of garlic in, but it was a very large, uh, you know, amount, a very large uh, amount of, um, of, of food we were cooking with one clove of garlic, right? So uh -huh. no big deal. So you see, this is, I know that with bacon, it's very difficult to, to take. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. I so, can, yes ma'am. You know, once I start taking all the fat, there's really nothing left. And the people who love eating bacon, they're gonna be like, what? girl don't take the fat away right so okay so you know under that premise i actually now just add it all together i guess this is what it's all about anyway okay yeah i think you get arrested in texas for cut uh, trimming fat off of bacon i think there's, they arrest there's you no that. doubt there's no doubt now this is nice i'm going to add it to the onions right about now so that's going to cook all nicely together this is so delicious Mm -mm -mm. So all the bacons go in with the uh, garlic and onions, correct? Yeah. So I would say like, you know, uh, one one full cup of, of bacon is enough just to give the, the flavor and stuff. Why not? Okay. I think that's and, fine. Uh, 
Yeah, that's perfect. Not because you don't want to over overtake the taste of the beef either, right? So it's just supposed to be a hint of. I don't think we cut the onions the same way she did, though. We kind of. Oh, what did you do with your onions? I got these really cute uh, mini Vidalia onions. They're oh. really cute. I couldn't find the pearls, uh, the onion pearls. Um, yeah, yeah. So we just basically cut them into circles, but they'll. Well, that's what it said. Okay. Rings or something. Rings, yeah, like onion rings, right? Okay, so you see, can you see the beef at all in this shot yet? It's right in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So this is pretty much cooked now. I'm going to uh, turn that off as this is cooking, and then I'll show you what happens with this, and then what happens with the rest. Yeah, I think I I screwed up. You have you. Uh, do you do you have the potatoes with the with the meat or the meat or the as the meat all by itself? No, I I actually was going to cook the potatoes with the meat, but these cook so quickly because they're so small okay. that I just figured I would do it separately. But really, it seems like everything's it is actually. I'm going to be honest. I actually use a, a portable electric stove most of the time because I don't want to clean my oven. <laughs> so. <laughs> So yeah, it was hard to gauge. It's hard to gauge how long and how fast this is going to take, but everything is moving quite well, very, very quick. Ginger has this really nice, uh, a really nice, uh, a, a gas stove uh, down here in her kitchen here at the, the Morgan Manor. And whenever I use it, I either have, she gets really irritated when I use it because I it's so easy to get dirty and she hates, absolutely hates cleaning it. So I have See what I mean? Much. This is what I'm talking about. Like, okay. it's so much easier just to kind of, and you know, I'm cooking for myself and my Mimi. So it's not like there's a, but when, you know, when more people come, you, uh -huh. you, know, you, you, you pull out the. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. You I pull out the China here. and the nice, and the nice stove. Uh, they all laugh at me. My friends laugh at me when they come visit and they see me cooking. Oh, like cook. They're like, kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We, I love the cam camera angles. I love that you got the camera on the stove so we can see exactly what you're doing right there. Looks great. Yeah, it's good. I'm still on high heat, by the way, just to okay. like, you know, because it's garlics and onions, so it's no problem being on the high heat. Yeah. And now I'm going to turn down the uh, the stove, uh, the heat on the stewing beef. Okay, completely turning it off. So once this is cooked, I'm going to transfer the uh, this pot over here and bring it over here. Actually, I'm gonna turn it on right now too. Might as well. This way the carrots can start cooking quickly. Okay, so our carrots are cooking already because we put it in with oh, the, great. The, the beef and the potatoes. Yeah, those so carrots are is, I guess, it's, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm following your directions. A hundred percent on my hand. You, this that's, the, the that's the beauty of it no my friend that's the best part it's exactly what i'm saying there it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter well the, the funny thing yeah. is for those that don't know is i technically have been what you would consider a chef i ran a food truck with a friend of mine in connecticut for a year so you know i actually have developed processes and procedures in the kitchen and so i know how to run a kitchen for the most part but amazing it's, it's it's strange following somebody else's lead though that's so counterintuitive so i'm trying to do my best but i knew i was going to screw it up my apologies <laughs> I, I have news for you luke yeah. your dogs are not going to mind <laughs> that's true gray gray's right here asleep at my feet and, you and can't really it's, still smelling the bacon yeah they, 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 of course they oh the yeah they must be going nuts Woo and they're like you know just get it to us poppy i don't care just get this we want it so they exactly. i've been teasing them all day exactly. long <clears throat> okay this is going really well i'm actually impressed with this endeavor to be honest with you yeah does your does your food look like my food? Not at all. Let's take oh. a look at your food. Can we see your food or what? Uh, I haven't been to. I have one pot that's a big pot with the with the broth that's got yeah. the carrots, stew meat, and the potatoes in. Then I have a skillet that has the garlic, the onions, and the uh, bacon in it. So those are the two pots that I currently have right here. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <clears throat> this is the two pots that I have. So 
Mine doesn't look like yours. So what do I need to do to catch up to, to you? Okay, so let me see. Am I am I able to uh, am I able to see your stuff? I'll show uh, you mine if you show me yours, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, here's, okay. Here's wait, mine. This has got the onions, the garlic, Hold and the on. bacon, chopped up. Bacon. I'm gonna put my glasses on. Come back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> this it's is so small. It's like this big. This is in the skillet. This has got the bacon, the onions, and the garlic in a skillet with the broth. Perfect. That's what I got too. Okay. What okay, else? Then the other one has, which yeah. I can't pick up and I can't show you because it's too okay. big. It's, it's a it bigger. Got? It's a bigger pot. It's a bigger yeah. pot. It's probably about a 12 quart or 12, 12 quart. Anyway, yeah. anyway, it's a bigger pot and it's got the yeah, yeah. carrots, stew meat, and the potatoes in there. So And all the water. And all the water. So at some oh, point. So at some oh, okay, point, good, 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 good. Excellent. Yeah, so okay. I just so let me, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. So at some point, we're going to take out the, the, for the human portion, we're going to take out the meat the carrots and the potatoes for the humans and combine them with the garlic, onions, and the bacon, right? At some point. So the nice thing is this, right? You uh -huh. actually did good. So are your carrots and potatoes cooked? Yeah, yeah. yes. They'll say yes, yes. Yes, they're good? Yes. The potatoes okay. are for sure. Okay, grab, grab a bowl, grab a bowl. Another big, nice size bowl. Because now what you're going to do, this is the dog part. Okay. So simple. Because in that mixture, what did you just put? Salt, pepper, oregano, right? I haven't added any oregano yet to anything. Okay, well, you can. A dogs love oregano, and dogs okay, love so pepper. Okay, so oregano's okay. It for doesn't dogs. matter. A dog can eat, by the way, any spice whatsoever, um, except for garlic. Yeah. Well, again, <laughs> it's questionable. A lot of garlic. If your dog eats onions, a little bit of onion, it's not going to damage it. If your dog gets into a chocolate bar, don't panic. As long as it's not like three chocolate bars, you know, so everything in moderation, right? And of course, depending on the size of your animal. So, but. So you um, want me to take out the dog, uh, get, get the dog portion out, get some, get some carrots, get some yeah, potatoes and some exactly, meat out for the kids, exactly, correct? Okay. Exactly. And how much of the broth? So that's good. So the broth is the water that we were cooking in and you want to, so you're going to keep some for our recipe. And you're going to give some to the dog recipe. Okay. Right. So split the broth in half. Because now for the beef bourguignon, we're going to be adding the tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, exactly. right? So that's going to give more moisture and liquid. Okay. All right. So that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to get a bowl and I'm going to separate okay. the dog okay. stuff. Two chefs, Morgan. Can I be like Gordon Ramsay and yell at my sous chef? Timber, that's what I uh, Can I call her a donkey? You donkey. I thought maybe you wanted to. Doggy soup doesn't break. Oh, the Pyrex is not going to break with the heat. I didn't think so. No, but... no I pour, I can pour hot baking grease into the Pyrex bowl, which is it's going to be the hottest then abroad. Do not get my stove dirty. Well, you know, that's going to be impossible. Uh, I'm not, I, you know, I, I am exceeding. I have cooked for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pet parents all around the country. I honestly have. And they all but say I, the same thing. He's messy. You know, you can't step on a comedian's joke there. Yes, I have well known, ah. it's well established, it's proven categorically, undeniably that I'm the messiest freaking chef ever in the world, especially when it comes to uh, paper towels. There's a, a family up in the, the New Hampshire, the White Mountains. And they yeah. make me bring my own paper towels when I come because they know I use all their paper towels and it drives oh, me Oh, that's so funny. I have to bring my okay, own I paper wanted, towels. I want paper towels. What's that? Okay. You, you kind of cut out. Your audio cut out. I didn't hear you. Okay, I'm going to repeat. Hold on now. Okay, paper towels, my friends and viewers. Here's the stick on. I really don't use them a lot unless... Unless I really have to. Now, right. what bothers me, okay, is, okay, let's not say what bothers me. This is the right way to use a paper towel. If you are drying your hands and you don't have a dish towel and you decide to use a paper towel, please do not use the paper towel to dry your clean, wet hands and then throw the paper towel out. Correct. That paper towel can be reused several times because it's your clean hands, right? And then you can use it to wipe the floor, to wipe your oven, yep, yep. to, right? Okay, so that's good. 
And so thing Ginger too. actually, Ginger drives me nuts. She hangs the wet paper towels where I have my <laughs> spices and stuff like that. So they can dry out. She can use them to clean the counter. But so I use my paper towels like four or five times because what drives her nuts is I will, until I got no more use of my paper towel, I will put them in a in like a, a trash bag and save them as as kindling for my fire, my campfire. Oh, that's so that way they're totally gone. No trash at all whatsoever. Good use, for you. Kindling. That's wonderful. So I'm the, that's I am wonderful. the Uber recycler when it comes to paper towels, but that's great advice. Get as that's really, really good. Now. All right. Wait, yes, I gotta show I gotta show you this. I got this for Ginger uh as a as a way of saying thank you for letting me use the kitchen. Let's see if you could see it. Oh, cute. Are those, what is it? What is it? I can't because it on my glasses. Read it. Oh, how cute. Is that like, a, what does it say? You ah! can't read that? You're going to make me say it? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me see. I got it. Oh my God. It says, bitch, I'm the sous chef. So I'm the secret, <laughs> I'm the, I am the secret ingredient. <laughs> but anyway. Bitch, I'm the secret ingredient. That's hilarious. Yeah, well, I, I have a saying. It's a, it's supposed to be funny. It's like I am the secret ingredient. And anyway, but I have a saying in my kitchen. There's no bitching in my kitchen. So I love to have the fun, funny love. I, that's why I love your spirit. Oh, I like so, that. I love your energy. You're so great. You're so happy. It's great. I I, was, I can't wait. I've got to come up to the Canada and cook with you personally. I don't think we've ever absolutely. Met. Been, yeah. Please do come. Except for I'm in California. So if you go to Canada, I'll kind of miss you in there. Wait, how long you didn't you used to live up in Canada? I still live in Canada. I live in both California and Canada now. Oh you're yes, one and of I've, those. I've I've been here a little longer than expected, and and I just got a horse, a brand new horse. So wow. now I'm going to be adding the horse recipes and menus uh, to my <laughs> healthy cooking with Ro for you. Uh, do, you do you have a show? Uh, this is a time for you to plug what you do, Ro. Uh, do you have a yeah. show? Uh, where can people watch the show? Yeah, I have Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, and they're all called Healthy Cooking with Ro for you and your pet. Excellent. Yeah. Um, we'll so, link to that. Yeah. And Ro is R-O, by the way. And yes. short for Rowanna. As Rowanna. You know, yeah. So Rowanna is my real name. And I do run, uh, I run Neopause, which we make uh, orthopedic and running shoes uh, for your furry best friends. Uh, I do sell to different animals like pigs and dogs and cats for medical reasons, but they definitely don't walk around in shoes. <laughs> um, yes, I've been using Neopause. Donkeys. Did you say donkeys? You have booties for donkeys? Oh, yeah, yeah. Donkeys and llamas, Luke. We've had llamas use our stuff. Yeah, oh, because they wow. fit the, well, We have 14 say? sizes, so. Yeah, I'd love to see photos of that. That's awesome. I have the best picture of a donkey in our shoes. I'm, I will send it to you. It is so cute. Well, oh, we look, there's a lot of history here with Roe from Neopolis because on my first walk from Austin to Boston, we tried all the brands out there, all the different types of, of shoes. And I, I sadly and apologetically have to admit, Ro, that we came to Neopolis last. Although I think actually you found out about us and came to us. Uh, yeah. But, um, it's like you're back. The phone or you're doing you're doing cartwheels or something I over there. Right. I don't know how the show is. I got so excited. The wheels. But um, but I got to tell you that the story that there's a, there's a beautiful Hudson story in there is that um, for those of you that that don't know what Neopaws their boots look like, you don't actually call them boots. You have a specific particular name for them, right? Oh my God! What I have to tell you is, I just tried the onions with this bacon and garlic mix. Oh my goodness gracious! So good. <laughs> Oh, okay. good. That's yeah, no. So what were you nice. gonna, Luke? <laughs> running, ADD. running shoes. Yes. Running shoes. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, Luke, hold on one second. I yes, want to plug my company, but I want to make sure we're on track. How's your food? My food is ready to be uh, something. Uh, my beef is no nowhere near the garlic, and and I didn't know the the beef. I set aside some some of the the beef. This one. <laughs> Your onions, you made it your onion and garlic mixture, right? The gunion? Correct. The gunion. But I didn't put beef the in bacon. That, you added the bacon? Yep. yep. Okay, that's it. That's okay. delicious. Okay, this is beautiful. So now, okay, see my, my empty bowl? Yep. This is the empty dog bowl. Now, okay. dogs can also eat mushrooms, carrots, oh, potatoes, yeah. beets, oh, uh, and even green. Yeah, just FYI. So, so uh, are we doing the tomato paste? Uh, do you want us to get the tomato paste ready? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's going to go into the beef bourguignon mix. Right now, I'm just doing separating for the dog right now. Okay. All right. And the other day, uh, a couple of nights ago, I made Mimi organic chicken with mushrooms and zucchini. So I love, she loves zucchini. I love zucchini too. So zucchini squash, and it just all gets nice and cooked up together with the mushrooms and she laps it up, my friend. And I also, by the way, for all of our fun viewers, <laughs> I've now started uh, buying the little multivitamin shoes. Those are great that they have. I love that. I wish they had that 20 years ago. Uh -huh. um, so you can just give that to your dog and also probiotic. And it doesn't have to be a dog probiotic. Any probiotic is good. I open the capsules and I put it on the food for her. So, you know, oh, she has yeah. a good gut flora, gut flora, right? Like us. Right. So basically, everything that you do, you do for them. Okay, here we go. Oh, what, what am I doing with the dog bowl? Okay, here we go. So here's my, so I'm going to take the potato yep. right now and carrots. Yep. And I'm going to put it, separate it. Uh -huh. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to, maybe I'll go, yeah, this way. Okay. So then here. So we're going to put some of that and take it and save it for Mimi's. So you can choose how much you want to give to the animal. And by the way, I never cook in small amounts. Okay. No, no, no. I always cook in large amounts because uh, it's just easier. And you don't, then you don't have to keep doing it every night. So, and we all love leftovers because it, and of course, you know, when you, when something sits in its jus and, and spices, it always tastes better the next day or the day after. Okay. So don't be shy or think it's like weird so, to eat. Bro, when you separated that out, did you keep, you put some of the broth in there too, right? right. Yeah. You see it right there. That's the dog bowl back Yeah, hon. But you know what? So this broth here, actually, because I've got the broth for the meat, I'm going to put that in there as well. So I'll, I'll share that. The nice thing about when you're reheating things, I, you do, I, I don't serve my dog's food cold at any time it's always lukewarm and i always oh, wow. use uh chicken broth to warm things up okay right. so you can right. always afterwards use a broth and just add it to the frying pan as you're heating it up now i know it sounds very high maintenance but you know i mean it doesn't it really isn't it doesn't take that long you know it's just you 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 have to program your brain and it's a very routine thing that you get into and it's very easy. It becomes easy. So whenever we want to tackle something that's different, keep the positive attitude and just do it. Okay. That's my uh, constant philosophy. Good. Okay, so well, now we're, we're, we're my trying mind. to do it and keep up with you over here. So now you're taking okay, are we at this part for the dog. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So now I'm going to add some of the half the, the, uh, the meat to the dog stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we have like a couple of um, cups of broth in with the dog stuff. Is that's that, fine, yes. That's fine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's okay. great. Sure, yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah. the, in, in beef bourguignon, they actually tell you when you're making beef bourguignon, they, whoever that is, many recipes, uh, you can add beef broth just to uh, up the taste and, mm -hmm. you know, the whole beefy thing. So that's great. So now, you know, I. Yeah, so this is, now you see this? That. This is now for the for the dog. Correct. Okay. So is the okay. dog part done yet? Is it done now? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's that's the dog it's part done. is okay. done. So now oh. I'm going to take some of this broth here. That's the yep. broth I'm going to give to the dog. Okay. Correct. Correct. There we go. Okay. Perfect. And I'm going to save most of it now for. Yep. And I'm now. Are you with me on this? So this yes, ma'am. I am. Yep. I see where you're at. Okay. Now watch. I'm going to take this and pour it into here. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna just pour everything into here. We'll just put all that's it. Here. So yeah. now we're gonna move everything yeah, over to the human pot. Yeah, so you want everything in one pot, correct? Now we're going. Now this is our recipe now, human. Right, but you want everything in one pot though, correct? Yeah, not... exactly. So now I'm gonna also take the onions and put it into there as with the bacon and okay. garlic. So that is now done. The dog is happy. Right, I got too much. Broth. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. See, yeah. this is beautiful. Your dog is going to be so happy. Now, of course, I'm going to, you know, ultimately, I'll cut the potatoes up more for Mimi because her mouth is so small, Just, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but I did cut my beef up much smaller in small bits. And I used two pounds of beef for this, but, you know, who cares? So you, you use as much you as you want. Glass bowls, please. Well, that's small right there. Um, 
uh, Luke. Yes, yes. One last thing I just right now my, my sous chef wants to wants to go on a bathroom break and I told her no, not not in that is not, not true. No, we're we're just trying <laughs> to put things out. We're trying to keep up with you over here. I'm kidding. Um you're I think so I had, cute. I love what you're doing. I, I think I, I have too much broth, like. so I'm pulling some broth out here because yours looks a little bit uh for the dog? As, no, for the humans. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, look. I started like, with FYI. six cups of. I started with six cups of broth and or water, R O okay, water. Well, and I want to tell you. I seem like I have more than you. Right. I'm sorry. Well, bro. And the thing is, is when I cook, yeah, I always put covers on things so that the the water doesn't or the you know the jus doesn't evaporate. Today it's evaporating a lot, so it's okay though. Yeah. Okay. So this is. I've got a lot of. I got a lot of broth here too, Luke. You need it. It's good. It's good. Okay, so we're okay. going to go ahead and My friend, this I'm adding... Here, then, right, I'm okay, yeah. That's where, where are your mushrooms? Uh, they're over here. Ginger did a wonderful Good. job. Ginger, prepping, prepping. Dump. She's got them ready to go. There so you want go. them in the broth now, too? Mushrooms are going in now. They're going to cook for the next five minutes with my right. other stuff. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. We're getting, we're moving along. We're making progress. So it's all going... That's right. This is the kind of thing that I like. I want all of one pot. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to need some more broth because you uh, think so. Okay. Well, hers is some size thin as mine, but okay. Well, yeah, don't forget, we're adding the tomato too, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be brothy. And this is, and the reason they add the flour is to thicken the sauce if you really want to. And don't forget, we have we're we're, it, you know what? One thing I read and know about cooking with wine is that it can be bitter. So you don't want to cook it for too long. Okay. You want right. to kind of add it. So maybe the last 10 minutes and that's it. Okay. So no, you don't want it hanging out. Okay. And in the meantime, pause for the cause. I'm going to show you a very funny thing that I picked up since I'm in Temecula, California, wine country. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to, it says, it says, can you see that at all? I love yeah. cooking with <laughs> wine. Sometimes I even put it in the food. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's great. That was for my Alcoholics Anonymous group that they gave to us. <laughs> an award. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not an alcoholic. Okay. Well, you, go ahead. Go ahead. What? No, no, that's it. That's so all what, I have to say. So when do we, so we have the, to, the tomato paste, everything's in one, one pot. What's the next so I've, okay. I've, I've got a couple of ingredients. I just want to make sure I don't know what I'm doing with. I've got the tomato okay. paste. I've got some of the thyme, which we're using thyme instead of rosemary. When does that go in? Now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's good. That's perfect. And uh... No, you could put it in there like this and, and the leaves will just fall off. And okay. then you just, so. When do you put the tomato it. paste in? Yeah, when does the tomato paste go uh... in? Thyme here. I'm going to add it when I put the onions and bacon. I want everything to kind of, now I'm just cooking the mushroom up, right? So I want the mushroom to go. In fact, we could probably add everything right now. I just don't want to overcook anything. So this is good because the carrots can use an extra couple of minutes. So, and the potatoes are perfect. So that's all good. So let me see. And the nice thing about mushrooms. Oh yeah, they're already cooked. Okay, next. Okay, I'm gonna try. I need two hands. I'm gonna do it with one hand, one hand wonder. I'm adding the bacon and onions now, guys. Yep. Okay. Yep. I got it. So, I'm with you. One spoon at I've a already time. Already done that. <laughs> Pretty like fifty okay. steps ahead. <laughs> oh my goodness! You know, I'm. I've just tasted this and that, and my salt content is perfect. How about yours? Salt. I haven't. I haven't tasted mine yet. I. I I'm not. Okay. At that. Let's go ahead and do it. I'll maybe taste it. Okay, good. I, it's a good point though because I am I because I make sometimes complex recipes on my end, and the yep. one thing I always tell people that I work with and cook with is that everything has to be seasoned individually, even if you're going to put it in all together at the end. So oh, absolutely! You've it really does. Along the way, always yes, along you the do. way. Yes, I agree, Luke. Spoken from a true chef, because you know you can't just. Because that's that's what it, it it doesn't cook long enough for everything to absorb the right. the spices, and that's why when I was saying that the leftovers right. you know, do taste better because finally they get to sit in with each other, right? Okay, so now 
I am going to just stir this up together. And, we'll and then add the tomato paste to it. Does tomato, I have crushed tomatoes, crushed. You like so crushed you, tomatoes or tomato paste? Yeah. Toma so it doesn't really matter. You know, whatever floats your boat, whatever you have in the cupboard is perfect. But I yesterday went out and bought organic crushed tomatoes. Now <laughs> I actually have an acid thing. I'm, I can't See, eat too much acid. So. Okay, wonderful. Mm, this is looking fine. Be dissolved. Oh my goodness gracious. I can't wait so to we take we have six ounces of tomato paste. Is that good? Okay, yeah. I yeah, that's per six ounces. Yeah. Is that that's one of those small cans, right? Right. Yeah, that's that's perfect actually. The small can. I think I'm gonna use oh I guess I'm gonna use I'm gonna use all of mine. <laughs> Okay. 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 Uh, all right. Perfect. There we go. I don't know if you can see, but Lily's pacing back and forth. All right, she's ready. Got the oh, tomato paste here, guys. Everyone, look at the tomato paste. Just a generic version of it. The whole thing. The whole thing. Oh, this is groovy. Now, uh, I also read that if you have a gluten sensitive diet and instead of putting the flour in to make the roux, you can uh -huh. put cornstarch, cornstarch. I'm not really big on using any of that stuff, but you can if that's, you know, when you're especially when you're cooking something very sophisticated and you want it to turn out perfectly. I don't so, because what I do is I, if I want to thicken it, I'll just cook. I'll cook it down. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. you, I don't like adding stuff that I don't have to. Flour will take away flavor. As yeah. you know, yeah. Um, so I don't like Good adding point. anything or taking away anything unless abs I'm a minimalist when it comes to cooking. I don't yes. like adding ingredients unless it contributes a lot to the, the whole thing. And I and yes. I yeah. yes. I agree with you. I definitely agree. So now we're gonna just let it kind of simmer uh okay. for a few a five like a few minutes, right? Because now everything's just gonna take to each other. And then of course we're gonna add the uh you know i guess how much wine you add is really up to you uh you can do it to taste you can start with a cup you know a five ounces uh -huh. six ounces eight ounces eight ounces is probably a good amount really I okay think. yeah so that's eight ounces is one cup yes. <clears throat> eight ounces is one cup so you want to go ahead and add the wine now to it is that correct i'm gonna give it two, two more minutes i'm just gonna two let minutes. it okay yeah i'm just not yeah go ahead oh that's a little bit here um we here's what we got to show you everyone this is a pinot noir oh my god this is a pinot noir from the burgundy region in france so this is legit Woo! Legit nice. burgundy. because that's what, that's what burgundy means is actually stewed in burgundy correct or cooked in burgundy Bourgon, that's right Bourgon, france that's right my, I had three years of France when I was in high school, and uh, I remember very little of it. <laughs> I know how to say uh, chien. Chien, dog. Chien, dog, yeah. I just have to say that this is a masterpiece. Voila, perfect. Does it taste, taste good on your end, huh? Oh, my goodness gracious. I just had a little piece of the cooked garlic that came with full of the tomato, crushed tomatoes. Let me ask you a question. I was going to do it, but I ran out of time. Is I love, because it adds the additional umami to anything, I love roasting the garlic. And rather than adding uh, diced or minced garlic, adding roasted garlic, because you got the caramelization, you got the sugar, and it just adds a little bit more umami to a stew than the diced garlic. That's it's nice. Awesome, that. You know what? Actually, as you were saying that, I, I visualized in my mouth the little caramelized onion, that yeah. little thing, right? Yes, I yep. see what you're saying. So let's tell the audience, how do, you, um, how do you do that with the onions to get there? How do you roast them? How do I roast them? Well, yeah. I, I, take, I take garlic cloves and, uh, and onion slices and drench them in salt and uh, some type of grease. Sometimes I'll use bacon grease. Sometimes I'll use uh, olive oil. And sometimes I'll use butter. And I just roast it at a very high temperature in the oven, let me get nice and caramelized. And uh, it's beautiful. 
Oh, that's great. And you was can that also, what you were asking for? Or? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was asking for. Yeah. And I mean, and those who love to barbecue everything, right? It's perfect on the Barbie. Absolutely. Right? All Especially right. So I'm going to add. Summer. Hello. I'm going to add a cup of the, the wine now to the. Me too. Uh, me too. Me too. All right. Here me we, too. Cheers. Here we go. I don't drink anymore, but cheers to you. Yeah. Cheers. Good. Cheers. Okay. Here we go. All right, we're gonna do we're gonna do uh we're gonna do a little, yeah that's fine right there right a little less than a cup is what we're gonna do because I, I I think she has more broth than we do yeah that's uh possible of course I probably started with more water maybe it could be but I like I said is to me it doesn't matter how much broth I start out with because to me it's just you cook it longer right you just cook it a higher a little higher yeah. temperature you cook it longer. Yeah. You let the yeah. water evaporate out or the broth evaporate out. You thicken it that way and it condenses the flavors. Whereas if you add something to it, it takes away from the flavor. So oh, I like my point. flavors compact and condense. Yours is looking really good over there. I know, right? I feel like I want to put some spaghetti in it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it's like. You I love the article that you sent to me. Uh, you sent me some uh, a, a bunch of information about meat bourguignon and what i love about it is they talk about what's traditionally eaten with potatoes however you can do what i love is polenta and i was thinking man i oh. bet i bet bourguignon with some nice polenta buttery polenta is beautiful oh my gosh that would be beautiful yes yeah. and you can serve it with rice and really you know that's the beauty about cooking too and i the beauty that you can you know add add whatever you that whatever your favorite thing is and it will still taste as long as the base and the sauce has that flavor Everything else will absorb be beautifully with it. Right. Um, yeah. And in fact, uh, one of my recipes on the show is uh, meatballs made with polenta. And you should Good. really try that because the dogs love it. And in fact, my camera, the videographer at the time, he said, Ronnie, out of your, you know, 26 shows, the meatballs and polenta were my favorite, which was really cute. I am going to check that out. So easy to make, Luke. You're going to love, trust me, you'll love them if you love polenta. Just delicious. I, no I, time I, to make it. I, I do. I do. Let me ask you a question, Ro. Do you ever yeah. ask, I love umami because to me, that's like one of the, like the, to me, it's just it's the <laughs> thing that brings a dish together. And yeah. so roasted garlic, caramelized veg, onions, it can all bring umami to a dish. But I like to add soy to any of the stew. Do you ever add soy, just a little bit of soy sauce, or are you against that? You know what? Again, it's to taste. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. You could. I wouldn't do it with the beef bourguignon. But I have news for everyone right now. I just tasted the sauce now. Yep. Good stuff. Oh, my goodness. Like, you can't, the wine in here just uh -huh. popped it. Uh-huh. Well, it's smell, smelling wonderful on our end. Uh, oh, so, so Lizzie, I, the one thing I'm going to turn it off. This, I'm done. Mm? You're done on your end. Okay. All right. Oh, Let's yeah. Any more, then it will go bitter. This is perfect. And okay, the nice so thing I'm is, go ahead and turn off. You know, I'm turning it off to, on our end, my end, too. Yeah. And always remember that after you've, it's like when you're cooking hard boiled eggs and we think we have to boil them for 15 minutes, in fact, or 20 or whatever. And if you actually you boil it for 10 and turn it off and come back an hour later, your eggs are just as cooked because, of course, the heat doesn't go away. It sits, right? And, right? So um, is this the time to give the uh, our little guests of honor yeah. their their food? Yeah, we've got the taste testers here going nuts. They're just they're 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 pacing. <laughs> they're giving us a stink eye over here. They're ready to go. They've been safe. They said, "Poppy, Chef Big Dog." Actually, that's what I, I tell them to call me that on the day when I'm in the kitchen. They they call me. They don't call me Poppy. They call me Chef Big Dog. Chef Big Dog. What is the dog call you, you that? <laughs> yeah. What is what is what is supper time? What is going to be ready? Because I've been. I've been hamming it up all morning long. How we're, we're going to make this beautiful beef bourguignon for them today. So, are is it ready to for them to eat? They look at Mimi; she's ready to go. All right, you, is it time to bring in our taste testers? Yeah. So, listen. Uh oh, Mimi, wait. She was about to get up and dig in. That's a really <laughs> nice big dog bowl, my friend. Um, so it's a little warm still, I think, though. Don't yep, you think? Yeah, that's is true. It okay. I don't let me see. Let me see. Ours been cooling off. Now Ginger wants to show you the Bowser okay. beer. Oh. Here, please. Thanks for that. 
So um, we do not have doggy wine, but I would like to know what type of Bowser beer. Can you see that? You got to point it up here. You can... I can't. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, so oh, have, So that is, uh, is that the pork or the beef? That's the beef. Yeah, beef would make the most sense. Okay. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, the chicken. Yeah. And then we have... And, oh, this is the beef. You had the pork before. So this is the yeah, this beef. This is my little bit of hand over here. So um, this looks which one do you think would pair best with the, like the meal this evening? So long. Ginger, oh, this is the first dish. time I hear about doggy beer. We have to talk about this. Who makes it and where did you get it from? Did someone donate it to your uh, cooking they show? They did, yeah. Did they you? donated <laughs> actually. The foundation now has a... Um, <clears throat> A slobber saloon. So they donated it to the slobber saloon and um Aww. we give out samples and then we and then we can sell it. So we took this slobber saloon on the road last week to Madison, Wisconsin for our puppy up walk there. And it was a great success. It's so cute. I'll, I'll send you pictures of it. Yeah, imagine a bar, it's like a little bar with some stools. And then we set up some shots of Bowser beer and we had the dogs come up and taste test, but it, it was a huge hit. It was awesome. So how wonderful. So, so you, to answer you the question, uh -huh, go ahead. I would definitely agree with Luke and say let's stick with the beef. With the beef. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of what I thought, but I yes. wanted to show that we had different flavors. That's very nice. That's very nice. Um, and so with the Bowser beer, like uh, like you said earlier, you There's might more. put some broth or something over their food if you were warming it up. So we could put the Bowser beer over it if we warm up their food. And then we can also freeze it in the summertime and do little ice cubes. People uh, freeze their pets. Uh, oh, that's a great idea. Love that. Because it's not, it doesn't freeze solid, solid, you know, like an ice cube. So yeah. um, I don't know if I showed this camera over here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's great. Okay. Can, you, really can nice. you see this camera now, finally? I can see it. Yes, I can. Okay. <laughs> okay yes. so I'm going to. I am. I am with the program here. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna pop open the beer for them. Let's see. I think I. Nice. In a little bit. Okay, so nice. we're. I think we're gonna move this camera down here and get it on the floor so we can get footage of them actually sampling the beautiful. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. The beautiful recipe that you gave us today. So we're gonna make. This is the money shot. Look at Mimi. She's ready to go. See, I love your. Right? Setup. You've got it looks like a butcher, her. looks like you've got a butcher block island there. Love that. I so do, much. I do. Look. Oh yeah. That's and you know what I did, Luke? What's that? Mm. Well, when I bought the house, this island was here, but in a bit of you know, like it was a little tired. Nice. And so I redid the whole kitchen, and my kitchen person actually epoxied the top of the butcher block. I saw that. Yep. Yeah, because Warm, let me tell hard. you the difference that it makes. I My friends used to come over. I'd have to worry about a glass of wine, you know, leaking on the butcher block, constantly conditioning it. Forget about it. And no one's cooking on it, like cutting stuff on it. So this right. is just basically the party island. It's my, it's my desk in the daytime. I work off of it, so it's nice. So this way I never have to worry about it. Yeah, well, I, I got this nice chef. This, this well, I think it's a 12-foot chef table, maybe a 10-foot one here. Yeah. It's stainless steel. Well, I'm from Texas and everything is at least two, two foot longer and bigger. So I say 10 for 12 feet. <laughs> anyway, it's a great table, but it's just, it's so hard to film because we got it up against the wall and the wall, um, Ginger came up with the idea of hanging these, uh, what is this, like merchandise display racks yeah, and then the racks and then the spice racks I've got and the, also the utensil racks. This is a very functional kitchen, so I wish I could show you that, but let's get the kids out here. Okay. Um, let's get Ginger's camera. Hold on, bro. We're going to change the camera. We're going to put this is Ginger's laptop right here. We're going to take this one and put it on the floor so you can see the results of the taste test. Where's Grayson? Frank, Ray, come here. Come on, Grayson. Frank, Ray. All right. Well, so cute. You can't eat that. Oh, the baby. There's the leaf. Hey, I want to tell you guys something else that I've uh, discovered. And I try to do it with all my pets, especially when they drink water. So I use elevated bowls. And I, I'm doing the same thing with the horse horse food as well. 
I can't touch it right here. That's it's her right there. Anyway, I'll talk to the audience since they're busy. <laughs> yeah, we're trying. Well, I'm sorry, we're just there. You got it. It's right there. You can no see problem. I see often talk to myself. Food. It's not a problem. For those of you <laughs> can see Lily's side right here, it's been shaved because Lily has uh, Ginger could tell you. Well, she had every three to four months, she goes and gets an ultrasound because she's had stomach cancer twice. So oh goodness! Oh, said, that's she's terrible. doing okay. Knock on wood. She's yeah. she's fine. Her three appetites. Years. Right, sorry. Well, okay. she's a three-year survivor from having a gist tumor removed. So. Hey, can you hear? Wow! Her? Wow! You know, I'm going to tell you something. Many years ago, when I first got my when I got my first dog Max, and I got him from Mexico. He was the healthiest, fastest, best dog ever. Like he was the reason I actually created Neopause uh -huh. because we at six months, I took him rollerblading and he came back with bloody paws. And I was like, oh dear, how come they don't have running shoes for dogs? And so <laughs> I made them. And um, uh, but then you we, made the best. I, and the best, of course. And then I, I adopted Buster. And Buster, when I would feed him chicken, would have diarrhea. So, you know, I would uh, I, I would definitely adapt to his diet. So, you know, that was no problem. Lamb is always good for most dogs that if they're allergic to anything. But then he had, at the age of 13, he got a huge tumor in his stomach. Now, when I adopted him, he was from a backyard where in not the best of areas. So he would get out and basically everyone would feed him all the druggies and you know, all the people living on the street, right? This is where he came from. So uh, he, they would give him, listen, this is the point of the story. They fed him Alpo, like the orange. Oh remember God. that orange stuff that they used to make 20, 30 years ago for dog that looked like hamburger meat, but it was. Oh orange. yeah. Mighty, mighty burger. Yeah. Well, that's how that's how Buster got sick. So I want to say sometimes even humans were all genetically prone to certain things. It's in our DNA, right? It gets passed along to us. But when does the actual illness or dis-ease hit us? It's when we are not taking care of ourselves, right? When we're not eating healthily. One thing I like about this this dish, uh -huh. if you notice, uh -huh. we haven't added any oil or extra fat to it. Right. right? And you, don't have to. you don't have to. And that's the beautiful thing. So that's how clean it is. And what's in it is just the natural fat from the animal, which is super. Not too much of it, just a little bit, right. which makes it nice and tasty. So nobody should be adding, you know, copious amounts of oil to their food. Believe right. me, when you cook with water or a coconut oil is another favorite of mine. Coconut uh -huh. oil is fantastic. They say that olive oil, you shouldn't cook with it. It turns into a saturated fat. But they also say that some people say that about coconut oil. So it's all. So that's why I just keep it clean, you right. know, and I cook with my water and I can add on my lovely organic greens. I put the beautiful olive oil. In fact, I have an olive grove here on my ranch. And this last year I made olive oil. So. That was a fascinating uh, endeavor. <laughs> That's awesome. I I, did, I was trying not to interrupt you, but we had, for those of you watching, heard Lily having a sneezing spell and probably would have gotten worried about her. And Ginger thought she would solve it by moving the camera away as though, anyway, Lily has a bit of a, 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 a respiratory infection. Oh. It's been going around here in the house, but she's fine. So she got a little bit snotty, wheezy and stuff. So... Um, we're getting great, great. Come on, great, great. Come on, buddy. You know, we're here. To, come on, sweetheart. Let's get a treat. Come on, great, great. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to talking to everyone about the beef bourguignon <laughs> and Mimi. <laughs> so cute. No, but honestly, oh it's really not that, that big of a, an effort for the whole family to eat well and especially if you have children oh hi grayson now there Grayson's is. a tripod Finally. right he's a tripod he is and how's he doing he's doing uh, great yeah he's 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 just fine i don't know why he wouldn't want to get up over there um he was just in a little roundabout um area but no he's fine look at that loves it loves the recipe 
He's a champion. He's one of those passionate. He loves his food. We did it. So we I'm did it. I was surprised. I was just kind of curious to see how we would take the carrots because I think traditionally I've tried to give him raw carrots and raw veggies. He's not really been interested in that. So he's loving it. Loving it. Okay. Now, guys, what about you guys testing out your beef bourguignon? I wish I could always express the flavors and the deliciousness through a phone or a camera. You know, when I had my TV show, uh, 26 episodes, I, I don't know if you know this, Luke, but I traveled around Latin America and I cooked with top chefs. So, and then we, of course, we focused on the, the city where we were in, the culture and their cuisine. It I was one of the most fabulous. That. Yes. And I have a book uh, that I co-authored uh, for that as well. It was a few years ago. And it was prehistorically before social media. Otherwise, you would have known about it. Trust me. <laughs> so, uh, but I've been watching the episodes and it's so much fun. Uh, but my my point being is that even cooking all of these deliciousness, you know, it's kind of interesting. Okay, I'm not going to go there. Never mind. That's not, I'm not going to go there. I want to say, though, that I'm actually publishing, self-publishing a book for Healthy Cooking with Roe. So, Good. Luke, I am going to give you and Ginger a copy. I yes, love it. Thank you. Yes, and yes. I, I and love you to can hear some follow of all the recipes. I would love to hear some stories about you as a traveling, traveling with your chef friends and stuff, because you're, you're, it sounds like you're a legit chef. And I was more of just a guy that stayed with, with, with pet parents and who just wanted to go in and think about getting in their kitchen and cooking stuff. And so that's how I developed my skills was just, going in their pantry, opening up mm. the fridge and freezer and just say, I think this will probably work. And some, most of the time, thank goodness it did, but some of the time it did, sometimes it didn't. But uh, I'm going to try this uh, bourguignon right now. I'm looking forward to Big Dog's doing his taste test. test. You know, put put uh, put some of it in mm. front of the, right in front of the lens. Is it good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. To me, there's just nothing better and more beautiful than mushrooms, wow. beef, garlic, wine. Honestly, uh, just it's, uh, it's wow. Rustic, it's warm. It's rustic. It's just yep. it evokes all the wonderful feelings, and that's why I love it. That you could sh sh share it with your fuzzy bun. Oh, this is so to me cute. getting out, getting on the couch, getting a nice little bowl of bourguignon. Sitting there with your fuzzy butt, put on the Netflix, uh, streams of Netflix or Prime Video. Boy, mm. I guess you probably don't want something out of my bowl. We, you're just a true chef. You, you get, yeah, that's right. You don't get what we get. You get the scraps in the. I'm Luke. Kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, of course, I'm kidding. <laughs> of course, Ginger, you're kidding. actually, actually, mm. in, in the, the Morgan Manor, the, the fuzzy butts get the premier best of everything. Then Ginger comes next, and Chef Big Dog or your Big Dog, whatever right. that I get the scraps. That's actually as what you, you want? know, the chef is always the one, always the one that eats last, as you know that, right? What do you want, Mimi? How you like it, sweetheart? What do you want, Mimi? What do you want? You want more? You want more, my baby? Was it delicious? <laughs> oh, my baby, my baby's a good girl. Yeah. Indiana, uh, I mean not Indiana, but Grayson did not eat all of his carrots. Oh really? Is okay, so is he used to eating vegetables? Is he? Do you guys ever feed him veggies? Uh, I do, uh, Ginger. I, I like you. Is that I, I? I cook for humans. The way it works around here is I'm the one that typically cooks for people around here, and then I'll leave Ginger with like the chicken carcass, and she'll take the chicken carcass, make a broth, oh. and then add kale to it, and all the other stuff that she makes for, for Lily and her kids. Oh, that's so, nice. So it's pretty it's pretty clear cut around here at Morgan Manor. I cook for the people, she cooks for the pets, but I like this now that I can do everything. I won't need her anymore at all. Uh, she will have little use to me anymore because she's really little use to me in, in, in the podcast as a co-host. I'm kidding. Uh -huh. This is so wonderful, Ro. Thank you. It's been a wild experience. It's We've had like three cameras, never done anything like this before. We're here in the kitchen. It's interesting. You you did it with your phone. I was like, oh, I told Ginger, I was like, oh, I'm not sure this gonna, she's going to make it work with your phone, but you did it. You did it. You did a wonderful job. Though. Did we get everything in here? That, that you wanted to cover, I think, that you wanted to talk about? Absolutely. And uh, I'm just curious, how is the texture of your meat? Mimi's going crazy, by the way. She's like, more, more, more. 
it's good. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful. Really, it really is. Why the why the one step I would have done, and I think I think we talked about this, and I think we just didn't have time for it, is I would have browned the the beef, right? Um, I would have browned the beef and, and like a, just to like a butter, um, and and get that nice little caramelization on the top of the the beef. But other than that, it's great. It's wonderful. Yeah. This as also to our uh, viewers and our pet friends. You don't have to worry if your dog doesn't eat vegetables. Okay, vegetables is not a thing that all dogs like to eat. Their main the same with grain, right? It's not like you know, let's say or in the wild. Well, the only wild is around people's garbage cans, really. So that's the wild, so they'll eat anything. Um so no, don't panic. If it, the dog just wants to eat, you know, uh, meat, then that's enough. That's perfect. And then again, you can, okay, Mimi, I, I created a monster. Um, so I think you turned your volume down on your phone because I can barely hear you now. Can you check the volume? Yes, the volume. Oh, I just took a no. Are you better now? Well, say no. Yeah. Oh, better. I think that's better. Yes. Okay. Anyway, it's all yes, good. I was, better. That, there you yeah. go. Okay. I was just saying that the, the dog, you don't have to worry if your dog doesn't want to eat vegetables. Like that's not a big deal. It, what are vegetables? They're good fiber. The fiber that makes them go poo poo. It's a nice poo poo. The, you know, the carrots, uh, the beets, um, any of the greens. Mimi right. will not eat. Like if I give her leftovers of whatever I'm eating with some spinach on it, she'll actually leave the spinach behind. <laughs> okay, so it's and the raw the raw spinach, right? So just right. FYI. Anyway, well, that, that's the great thing about making a, a meal in a in a broth, though, is because even if they don't want the actual vegetable itself, then they'll still get the nutrients and the the benefits in the broth, though. Exactly, and that's why I love <laughs> using broth when I'm. Oh, bless you when Thank I'm you. cooking or heating things up because you know broth or chicken stock or beef stock also has great stuff in it. Right. And they right. actually cook with. Yeah. So it's, and remember everyone to don't overcook your food. Right. So just keep it nice and a little bit al dente so that the veggies still have the nutrients and uh, and and make it so much more delicious for the body. Yeah, I, I remember. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean... <laughs> go ahead. No, it's OK. I just keep rambling. Uh, no, I was just going to say, remember that healthy, healthy you is a healthy pet. Right. And and a healthy pet is a happy owner. So it's a cyclical thing. So Absolutely. remember, that. So we shouldn't if you, you know, you don't don't cut corners, not for yourself and not for your animals. That's great advice. Uh, I know I'm, I'm grumpy all the time and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's why I, I got cranky <laughs> pants on my my family. But, you know, the, the thing I love most about this is because I grew up in uh, my mom was a big, warm, uh, uh, just generous, beautiful person. And everyone on her side of the family, they just were excellent cooks. They were I don't think there were any chefs in the family, but they could certainly cook in the kitchen. And um, and it was she always made the kitchen the center of the house and the family. Oh, and so for so me, nice. you know, she had four sons. We didn't we had pets, but they weren't really the center of the house. But for me, it's just great to be in my kitchen and cooking for me and my fuzzy butts too. Ginger can go cook for her fuzzy butt somewhere else. I got the kitchen. No, this has been a great episode. Thank you for, for taking the plunge and doing this experimental. This is the first time we've ever done something like this on Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Uh, I, I look forward to getting uh, viewer comments and feedback, whether you like it, whether you thought, hey, you knucklehead, you should have put the camera over here or done this, that way, or whatever the case is. Feedback is, is important. Hopefully you're watching this on YouTube channel so you can actually see it if you're listening to this on on Spotify or our, I, uh, I Heart Radio, uh, I'm not sure you probably are still with us. So um, that's it. Uh, Ro, why don't you give out where people can find uh, Neopause on social media and where people can find your videos? So you can just go to neopause.com. So N-E-O-P-A-W-S.com. Right. And uh, Healthy Cooking with Ro. There's actual uh, video link on the homepage of Neopause that will take you to Healthy Cooking with Ro. But it's my YouTube channel. Would love to have everyone come and have a look at it. I'm sure you will love the recipes. I mean, we go from wild salmon, wild, wild almond crusted, crusted salmon to, you know, tortillas and all kinds of delicious 
delicious dishes for you and your your best friends. But as you can hear in the background, my the rest of the fuzzy butts here in the house, I only have two that contribute to this household. Ginger has, I think, twenty seven dogs somewhere oh. in this house, stuffed in corners on the up in the ceiling and stuff. I don't know, <laughs> but you can. There's chaos because everyone here smells the wonderful beef bourguignon recipe that you shared with us today, but now they want some of theirs. They're like, Poppy, chef big dog, I want mine. Give me some of mine. So on our end, it's time to feed everybody or else they're going to keep yapping like that. So um, please, everybody go. Oh, and I look forward to your cookbook and we would love to have you back on the show. Let's try this again. We'll learn from it. We now know kind of how it's going to work. Maybe we can make improvements, but I like it. There's the door right there. That's why they... <laughs> It's like it's collapsing over here. It's chaos with the fuzzy butt. So on wonderful, that note, everyone, wonderful. thank, thank you so much, Ro, uh, for being thank a part. You for coming. Yeah, thank you for being thank here. You. All right, guys, we'll see you next Thanks, week. Guys, all right, thank bye you bye. so much. Puppy bye, up. Liz, bye, Ginger. Talk soon. Love y'all, hey, everybody. Goodbye. The episode. Thank you. Wow. It's crazy. It's super fun. <laughs> it was super fun. Absolutely. Super fun.